It's not just spiders and hagfish that have something to teach us about strength. There is one creature that's found in every corner of the globe, a type of creature that outnumbers all the other animals alive on Earth, outnumbers them by more than three to one. They're known as arthropods, which just begs the question, what is an arthropod? Well, this crab is one. So are these. In fact, all crabs and lobsters are arthropods. And all spiders. And all insects. So what do they have in common? Well, it's the fact that they have an exoskeleton. Basically, all the soft bits are on the inside and the hard skeleton that supports them is on the outside giving these crabs super powerful protection and strength powers that would be useful for us too which got me thinking about whether there's an easy way to get to grips with how an exoskeleton actually works and what I came up with was this Bear with me. Now, cows aren't known for having exoskeletons because, well, they don't. But this toy cow works on a lot of the same basic principles. What you've got here is a series of hard tubes connected, held together by muscles, represented here by the strings inside. Right now, the strings are taut, the muscles are working. Relax them, cow flops down. Tense them up again, he stands up, becomes rigid once more. And that rigidity gives an arthropod a big advantage when it comes to strength. Let me try and show you what I mean. When I pick up this weight and hold it out stretched, I'm having to use all my muscles to keep my arms locked horizontally, which means I can't hold them out for very long. But what if I was built differently? What if I had the strength and rigidity and armour of an exoskeleton? This is the patented Hammond exoskeleton. It's not really patented. Neither is it technically an exoskeleton because I'm inside it and I have a skeleton inside me. But I'm going to try and make my internal skeleton irrelevant here. My job is just to tense and hold these pieces together. So let's see if this setup makes it easier to hold those weights outstretched. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm just contracting my muscles inside to hold these things rigid and straight, and it works. It's a success. That's good. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. Maybe it's worked enough. Yep, I think point proven. OK, so there is room for refinement but I could hold the weights for much longer. It works. And those same principles have been used to build something very cool indeed. This man is wearing a state-of-the-art exoskeleton. It increases his strength tenfold. Allowing him to comfortably carry up to 40 kilos. But the most important thing that you should know about this man is that he's paralyzed from the waist down. The way people look at me when I'm in my wheelchair is they look down upon me. They see the wheelchair moving, they don't see the person. 24-year-old Steven Sanchez broke his back eight years ago, going over a jump on his BMX bike. He hasn't walked since. But today, 
is going to be the day that all that changes. He's been summoned to an unprepossessing looking basement under the University of California and what's inside this room will change his life. He's been asked to test pilot a remarkable new piece of technology. An exoskeleton based on the way an arthropod works. The way that I got involved with the UC Berkeley exoskeleton project was everyone at the school were like, you know, we need testers basically to test out the, the machine. And I was like, I can do it. So, for the past 12 months, the Berkeley team have been creating a custom-built suit that can be tailored and programmed just for him. These are Stephen's new legs. Just like an exoskeleton, they go on the outside of his body, providing rigidity and support. And, as with all arthropods, the hinging joints are now on the outside, too. Time to try it. Stephen plugs in the motor and prepares himself. The muscles in Stephen's legs aren't capable of supporting him, but the rigid exoskeleton is doing the job for them. These are the first steps Stephen Sanchez has taken for seven years. And they feel pretty good. The way that I felt in the exoskeleton the first time I took a walk was a great, happy, achieving feeling. Taking a step was no longer an issue. It was just do it. It's pretty nice to be back where I used to be. Out in the corridor, there are some special onlookers. Stephen's mum and dad have come to see their son learn to walk all over again. It's a proud moment for all of them. doors to Stephen's world have been thrown open wide. He arrived today on wheels, but is leaving on his own two feet, in an exoskeleton inspired by nature. <laughs> 